Hello, let's do an example with a trick substitution. This example is actually pretty challenging, so try to pay attention. Don't blink too much because you will see lots of complicated stuff in this example. First of all, we would try to do your substitution integration by parts and it doesn't work. So we kind of teach you if you see a fraction, there are different techniques how to you how to work with fractions in the integral specifically with a square root and here's my table if you see a square root like so or like so or like so probably you should use check substitution with sine tangent or secant but i don't i don't see a square root here so do you all understand that this is the same as having an integral x to the 8 all over and then this beautiful one half piece which is 11 over 2. It's actually a square root in the denominator, which gives you 49 minus x squared. And then you can put 11 underneath over here, and that becomes 11 over 2. So square root, or oh, 49 minus x squared raised to 11. Now you see the pattern, and you can choose the trick substitution. So this is how I remember it. If it's a number squared minus input squared, choose sine. If it's input squared minus number squared, choose secant. If it's plus, choose tangent. In this case, I have a number squared. What number is that? Seven squared minus an input squared. That means I want to choose x to be a sine theta. What is my a? Seven. So let's do it. In this case, I'm going to choose x to be a, which is 7, sine theta. So it's case number 1. Then let's find dx. dx will be 7 cosine theta, d theta. And this is what we're going to plug in the integral. Whatever you see, x, plug 7 sine theta, dx, 7 cosine theta. Then the new integral becomes x to the 8 is 7 sine theta to the 8 all over a square root 49, let's write it down as 7 squared, minus x squared, which is 7 squared sine squared theta. And don't forget dx, which is 7 cosine theta theta d theta nice this is our new integral so as expected and i forgot 11 remember it was raised to 11 over here or outside of the square root both are fine so you can actually have it outside like so if you want which maybe is even more convenient so as expected and it's not a coincidence we want to factor out this 7 squared to end up to have 1 minus sine squared which is going to become cosine squared. So I'm going to have 7 sine theta, let's do it to the 8, to the 8, times 7 cosine theta, d theta, I'll put it in the numerator. 7 squared is factored out inside of the square root, so it's going to be just 7. You all understand that, right? Then it's going to be a square root with 11 outside and then I have 1 minus sine squared theta so again I factored out 49 but inside of the square root so it's actually 7 outside of the square root now we can start simplifying if you want to all those sevens and stuff like that so we're going to cancel this seven let's have some pink color this seven and this seven goes away that's already not too bad now we're going to have, oh, actually it's an interesting point. We factored out seven, we factored out seven in, outside of the square, 49 outside of the square root, that's seven, but 11 actually should be on top of the uh, seven. So let's not miss that. Yeah, basically I skipped this step and it confused my, uh, and confused me. So if you don't want to skip this step, this is actually a next step. And the step I skipped was 7 to the 8 sine to the 8 theta cosine theta 
all over and now I have parentheses 7 as square root 1 minus sine squared theta to the 11 that's what I have and now this is a skipped step and also there is 7 cosine theta and the theta part that's my dx used to be dx and now this 11 goes on top of the 7 so 7 is raised to the 11 then when we factor out we uh, when we cancel out we're actually going to have how much is going to stay out of all of those sevens this one and this one and this one it was 7 to the 9 divided by 7 to 11 so actually 7 squared in a denominator 1 over 7 squared and I always like kicking it outside of the integral now I'm going to have sine to the 8 theta cosine theta d theta all over what is happening inside of this square root 1 minus sine square is cosine squared and that's we planned that so that's not new so it's going to be let me not skip the steps to make sure everything is clear cosine squared theta raised to 11 square root and square and do each other so I have 1 hour 1 over 49 sine to the 8 theta cosine theta all over cosine theta to 11 d theta take a second to understand what just happened I can show you what happened the square and the square root cancel out and 11 11 stays so it's actually cosine raised to the 11 now what should we do now let's simplify as much as possible basically in pink color cosine decreases the exponent to 10 so now I have sine to the 8 1 over 49 I will have sine to the 8 theta over cosine to 10 let's write down cosine to the 8 times cosine squared because then we can use tangent and secant functions so it was cosine to the 10 and I broke it into cosine to the 8 and cosine uh, squared then I will have 1 over 49 integral of tangent to the 8 theta and what is 1 over cosine squared that's secant squared theta d theta and we're almost done integrating this is supposed to be a familiar part from the previous topic when we were teaching you how to integrate secants and tangents and cosines and sines with different even and odd exponents I see it look at this tail and I see that this is my dv but when this is going to be dv when v is tangent uh, not let's not call dv du when u is tangent so I'm performing u substitution here u is my tangent theta then du will be secant squared theta d theta because that's a derivative of tangent and it's exactly a perfect tail of that integral so finally it's going to be 1 over 49 integral u to the 8 du which is 1 over 49 and it's going to be u to the 9 over 9 but immediately go back to tangent notation so I will put in blue it's going to be tangent theta to the 9 over 9 so that was not too bad plus c and that can be simplified into 1 over 441 tangent to the 9 theta plus c this is the answer of the integral so as you can see we found the answer however if, if you remember we started with x and somehow we have the answer in terms of theta that means we need to perform the extra step the extra step is the one when we need to actually go back to the x notation that means so let's call it step two step two go back go back to x notation and in this case we are wondering what is tangent theta question mark step one was always step one was 
perform the trick substitution. Choose a trick substitution. We chose it to be 7 sine theta. Plug 7 sine theta everywhere. Simplify it using trigonometric identities. 1 minus sine square became cosine square. Simplify it more. Then at the very end over here, we used u substitution. So this is my u sub with different u this time, right? And then we got into the answer. Tangent to the 9 over 441. But what is tangent theta? So we're going to build, and I usually do it this way. I usually go back to the whatever we chose. Here it is. This is my choice. X is 7 sine theta. I'll write down over here. X is 7 sine theta. We need tangent theta. So we're going to build a triangle using the fact that sine theta from this so we're using this information sine theta is x over 7 that will help us to build a triangle right a triangle here it here it is then this is my theta why this one looks so ugly perfect almost perfect so theta then x over 7 is my sine which means this side is x because sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse so the 7 is going to be here right 7 over x then this third side which we need to find tangent is a squared minus x squared so in this case it's 7 squared minus x squared so now we have all the sides we need what function do we need to find the answer involves tangent theta so that's what we're looking for we're looking for tangent theta well we know the definition of tangent theta tangent theta from this triangle is going to be tangent theta is going to be So we know the formula. I'm just thinking to write the formula or not. The opposite over adjacent. And we found the opposite is x over adjacent is the square root. The square root of 49 minus x squared came from the Pythagorean theorem. Hope you understand that. Then the answer becomes answer. Answer is 1 over 441. Do you know where I'm taking this from? It's in that black box. 1 over 100, one over 441. Tangent to the 9, but tangent is x over a square root. 49 minus x squared. Don't forget to raise it all to the 9 plus c. So this is the part where we wrote. We need to get rid of the theta because we use it as intermediate calculation. But uh, when you give the answer, you should give the answer in terms of the variable you started with. And that is x. And no wonder we end up to have a square root at the end because we started with a square root. So we should have some kind of square root at the end. And also remember we started with 11 over 2 and now we have 9 over 2 exponent. 9 over over 2 because of the square root so it also makes sense so intuitionally speaking those things are correct basically we did three different things here we use the substitution and then we simplified then we used substitute use substitution at the very end and then a triangle to go back to the original variable and that is an example good job for watching the whole video and see you next time